Welcome to What's Really Happening in Southern Utah, the podcast. I'm your host, Dan Kidder. Our podcast is all about issues facing Southern Utah. Here we will announce your upcoming events, talk with movers and shakers in our community about important issues facing Beaver, Iron, Kane, and Washington counties, and make sure you are kept in the loop with interesting news and commentary of local interest. While we welcome folks from all over, our goal with this podcast is to give residents of Southern Utah a place to find out about issues that affect them. You can find us on Apple Podcasts and also on our Facebook group, What's Really Happening in Southern Utah, and online at What's Really Happening SU.com. Okay, we are back here in the Kidder Communications studios today for the second debate in our four-part debate series here on What's Really Happening in Southern Utah, the podcast. Today I am joined in the studio by County Commissioner Mike Blake and uh, Mr. Destry Griffiths is challenger for seat A for Iron County Commission. Gentlemen, we have flipped the coin. Mr. Blake won the toss and has opted to receive. So Mr. Griffiths will be going first in our questions and you will first start off with a three minute introduction. Both of you will get that opportunity and there will be no rebuttals to that. Uh, Then you will be asked a series of questions. You will have two minutes for that answer and then your opponent will have one minute as a rebuttal. At the end of of the uh, individual questions, you will each be asked a common question, and we'll both have two minutes to answer that question, and there are no rebuttals to that, and then you will have two minutes to make a closing statement. All right, you both can see the timer up here. I'm going to put three minutes on the clock, and uh, Mr. Griffiths, if you would start us off. Well, Dan, thanks for inviting us. Uh, I think uh, having being an elected official is um, very important and we need to vet them and and understand where they're coming from um, and I appreciate the audience and I hope that uh, everybody is uh, doing well and and will uh, uh, enjoy this uh, debate um, my name is Desher Griffiths I'm from Parowan I grew up in Parowan um, uh, what ended up happening was is uh, when I uh, growing up there uh, I'm always um, concerned with uh, what's going on in Iron County. Um, when I was 18, uh, that was when I was able to vote. Um, <clears throat> after uh, after turning 18, I ended up uh, going on my LDS mission. Um, I came back, went through the police academy. I was hired on part-time with Parallel PD. Uh, after that, I went uh, was hired to with Cedar City PD. Um, I worked part-time with um, other agencies. Um, during that time, I was also elected as an uh, Enix City Council member. During that time, I was able to be part of uh, budgets. Uh, I was involved in the tax referendum. Uh, during that time, we um, uh, voted, uh, several of the council members voted for the tax increase. Uh, I was one of two later uh, throughout the process. I was the only one that voted no on the tax referendum. Um, Later on, a a citizen group got that on the ballot, and we were able to vote. Uh, The citizens of Enoch voted that down. Um, Also, um, I've been involved in uh, the national and and, uh, uh, statewide politics. I'm really concerned with all the issues that we are involved with. um, during that time, um, after uh, le- retiring from Cedar City PD, I ended up going to um, work for a therapeutic center. Um, I've had a kind of a uh, uh, opportunity to stay away from politics, but since then, um, I'm concerned with uh, our spending. Which uh, the last six years, I've just uh, I was shocked to know that um, the last six years we our budget has increased uh, 60%. Um, And so that's very concerning. I think uh, we all need to understand and see where that money is being spent. And we need to uh, make sure the services are being provided. Um, As the services are being provided, uh, we need to start looking at trimming the fat as well. Uh, That's that's 
sixty percent if that continues to uh, evolve. All right, sir, your time is up. I, I will be uh, cutting mics right at that time. That way nobody can come back to me and say, oh, you gave somebody an advantage or gave him more time. <coughs> All right, and that way we're fair for everybody. So, Mr. Blake, let me reset that timer. I don't know why it, uh, there we go. You're up. All right. Well, again, thanks for having me. I, I appreciate these forums. Really, anytime I get to have an audience with our constituents, it's awesome. Uh, quick introduction. My name is Mike Blake. Uh, I have served on the Iron County Commission for the past, this is my fifth year, uh, sixth year. Uh, I came in on a midterm election when Commissioner Miller left, kind of unexpectedly, uh, served two years there, uh, ran for re-election at that point and was elected to my first full term, which I'm kind of completing now. Uh, my background is also in law enforcement. Uh, I've spent, well, my first couple of years with, with the Iron County Sheriff's Office. I uh, spent 21 years with the Cedar City Police Department and retired in 2018 to concentrate full-time on the Iron County Commission. Uh, I do work very part-time for Enix City Police Department currently, uh, basically to keep my certification intact, uh, as well as I, I kind of consult with them on their uh, sex crimes investigations and plug a hole in the uh, patrol schedule every once in a while. Uh, you know, I'm really proud of what we've been able to accomplish on the commission since I've been there. Uh, I would say that Iron County is uh, the most financially secure, uh, and we're in better financial shape than any other county in the in the state of Utah. Uh, we're out of debt. Uh, we don't have any general obligation bonds. Uh, we've been able to accomplish that uh, by being very conservative with our budget. Uh, we've been able to do a lot of innovative things within within our, kind of our manpower. Uh, we've been able to combine a lot of positions as, as positions come open through attrition or something else. Uh, we've been able to combine those, uh, actually make our workforce much more... Uh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. I, I, don't, I don't like the microphones. <laughs> uh, we're just much more efficient in the way that we do things. Um, my, you know, my, my pride and joy and the things that I am most proud of are my family. Uh, I've uh, got a great wife of 26 years and three children. Uh, all of them are doing really well and are really, we're, we're each other's biggest fans and supporters. Uh, my reason for serving, I love public service, but I, I truly want this place to be like it was for me, for my kids, just a wonderful place to be. All right. Closed out right on that three minute mark. Perfect. I didn't have to turn off the mic. All right, gentlemen, we're going to get started here. The first question is for Mr. Griffiths. Uh, Mr. Griffiths, you mentioned on your website and in your convention speech that you will work as a full-time commissioner. Please explain what that means, and will you work in any other capacity while you serve on the commission? Well, that's a great question. Uh, when um, I was deciding to run, uh, that was one of the major concerns that uh, was brought up to me is that uh, they wanted a full-time commissioner. And so um, talking and, and looking over my own schedule, um, currently, I'm, like I said, I'm um, in the therapeutic uh, field, working down at Three Point Center and working with uh, troubled youth and uh, uh, adopted youth. And so um, I've been down there for four years. And so now um, I'm able to, uh, uh, once I'm able to get that position as a full-time commissioner, I will quit. I'll give my two weeks notice there at, uh, where I'm working so that I can be a full-time commissioner. What that means for me is to be able to be accessible, uh, to be able to field calls, emails. Um, I would, I really want to uh, get the public involved. I believe uh, it's very critical that they um, are familiar with what is going on. They're educated on the uh, uh, what uh, 
uh, is on the commission agenda. So another thing I'm going to do is uh, do town hall meetings. I'm going to try and do that once a month. I'll rotate to each uh, city or e each town and speak to each um, the, the citizenry so that they can be aware of what is going on so that um, they can give their uh, input. Um, I believe by talking to people, that right there, um, sometimes I learn just as much as they'll learn from me. They, they might see a different angle than I might see. And so I, I feel like that we've always got to be open. And by being transparent, by being with them, that's one thing that I would, I, some of the things I'll do. But yes, I will be doing full-time commissioner. Okay. Mr. Blake, you have one minute to <coughs> respond to that. Yeah, I think that's a, it, it, it's important. Um, so as our county commission is set up, uh, we're, we're designated as part-time commissioners. Uh, basically what that means is we don't get paid as much as the other elected officials. <clears throat> uh, we, we don't actually have a, an office that we can sit in on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, but this job very much is full-time. Uh, there's, I mean, many, many days you start at 7 in the morning and you end at 9 o'clock at night sometimes. And it, it's important to be able to, to focus that time. Uh, that's why I left full-time employment back in 2018 uh it just wasn't fair to uh my employer then to, to try and juggle the positions uh it's really important to be available all right um that kind of brings us into our first question for mr blake um mr blake you currently work three jobs as a detective for the city of enoch as a medical examiner and as a county commissioner several of your constituents and even some members of the cedar city council report that you seldom return phone calls how are you able to balance that workload and still ensure that you are accomplishing the things that the people of iron county expect from a commissioner you know i've heard that i know where it originated and it's extremely misleading uh I work as a county commissioner. My Enoch City Commission, my, I, I'm not on the schedule in Enoch. Uh, I haven't worked a patrol shift. I, I haven't worked more than 15 to 20 hours in a pay period at Enoch in months. Um, long story short, uh, when I left the Cedar City Police Department, decided to focus on the commission, uh, I'm not collecting any retirement uh, for my police service. Uh, in order to go back and collect that retirement once this service is over within the county commission I have to keep my certification valid uh, that's what I'm doing with Enoch City as well as look at the current situation of policing I'm cheap help with a lot of experience to serve you know and, and my entire career has been based on public service uh, as I you know, I offer that to Enoch. They're paying me a much reduced rate of what they're paying a full-time officer. Uh, the uh, medical examiner, that's a contract position uh, that I've held for 16 years. Basically, uh, there's three of us in Iron County. We take turns being on call. There's no, the only time I respond to that is responding on an actual dead body investigation. The, the majority of those or an hour's time, maybe a field work, and then all of that reporting and such is done at night. Uh, it, it's, it's, that narrative has been very misleading. Um, I, I, I try and answer my emails and my phone calls as judiciously as possible. Uh, sometimes I get 100 a day. Uh, I do my very best. It might take me a minute, uh, but I, I, I answer those calls. All right. A minute here on the clock and Mr. Griffiths well uh, when I was a police officer I ended up working several part-time jobs and uh, and then while I was on the Enoch City Council that was part-time and so I know that juggling schedules can be very difficult and it is it's but we have to it's a we were it's a demand you know with with inflation and and the cost of living and everything I, I understand that but I just know that from me that when I was transitioning from uh, one spot to another spot especially from being a police officer to uh, into the county commissioner or into the city, Enoch City Council 
um, I had to really concentrate, and I, it took me a little while to kind of get back into that role. Um, sometimes we, you know, I, I know as a police officer, we ended up having many hats that we had to wear, and uh, you know, it's it is tough to juggle, uh, you know, part-time jobs. Okay. I don't shouldn't have started that yet. Mr. Griffith, this question is for you. How do you feel that Iron County handled the pandemic, and are there any things that you would have done differently? Well, uh, nationally, I was really concerned because uh, I understand that, that people are nervous and they're scared and, and wanted to know the best course of action. Um, one thing that I believe is that I don't know what's good for you and your family. And so I think the best uh, option on that is that we as individuals and as families and as parents need to decide the fate of our own family and our kids. And so I, for uh, the federal government to, to mandate and shut down uh, the economy and to mandate all of the things that they did, uh, it really was concerning. So. Um, that being said, um, you know, I kept on watching what, what Utah was going to do, and, and Utah kind of was uh, mediocre on that, um, and I wasn't sure if they were going to try and shut things down. I mean, we had, uh, you know, the, the uh, um, Cox that was saying that he was going to start to uh, monitor people as they were coming in and coming out, um, so that was a concern, um, especially due to our Bill of Rights. Um, so uh, I was really uh, watching the sheriff's department and police department and um, also the county commissioner. Um, one thing that I was really thankful for is that the, um, I saw that uh, Paul and, and the county commissioners ended up writing a letter and they basically asserted uh, their county uh, jurisdiction and said that we, were, we weren't going to adhere to it and we were going to you know, allow people to make their own choices. And if you see that that's really damaged the economy and we still really haven't rebounded for from what's going on. And now all of a sudden on top of that, we've got inflation. So there's a lot of damage that that has done. And not only to, to the economy, but to our Bill of Rights, to our, our constitutional rights. Okay. Mr. Blake. And I am extremely proud of Iron County's response to the pandemic. Uh, first of all, I'm waiting for the, the timer to, yeah, to the start. Timer, timer doesn't want to work all of a sudden. That's I should have just kept talking. You should have. You would have got a few extra seconds. So uh, I'm extremely proud of our response. First of all, uh, we stood up for the rights of our community and the, and the right to make medical decisions for ourselves for, uh, within our families. Uh, we, Destry mentioned letters that were written to our government uh, at, you know, in support of, of those rights. So let me take that one step further. Uh, to make sure that our that our state and federal government understood what was going on in Iron County, uh, I, in conjunction with uh, Cedar City, Southern Utah University, uh, and 50 other organizations within the county, founded the Iron County COVID Task Force. Uh, we met once a week, and we literally made sure that we had correct information from all aspects of the county, and all of that information was funneled to our government leaders. Uh, that was extremely successful in mitigating some of those restrictions that we were looking at. All right, you're out of time, but the good news is we have another question for you on this topic, so we can keep rolling on that. Uh, Mr. Bleak, you had a pretty rough time with covid uh, you got pretty sick. That's yeah, sick. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you still oppose shutting down businesses in Iron County. What do you see as the proper role of county government in managing a pandemic? So I got sick. It was unpleasant. Uh, I don't care how sick I was. It did not change my opinion on uh, wearing masks, uh, shutting down. I mean, we all have a responsibility to be careful, uh, but that's an individual right. Uh um, I, I, I championed businesses to be open. Uh, me and, and my friend group, my family did everything we could to support those businesses that were open. Uh, we ate out way more than normal just to make sure that we were supporting our local businesses. Uh, the proper role of government in anything, whether it's pandemic related or not, is to provide the basic, 
uh, services that are required, but stand out, of, stand, <clears throat> get out of the way of free enterprise and capitalism. Uh, we don't have the right to tell people how to act and, and such when it comes to their health care. Uh, I probably could have been more careful during COVID, and I may not have contracted the virus, but, I'll, but I wouldn't have done anything different, and I wouldn't ask anyone else to do anything different. Uh, really, the proper role of government in anything is for us to provide basic services, uh, keep the peace, but get out of the way. There's a lot of people out there that do much better than government. You know, we need to stay out of the way. Um, I, I don't really have much more to say. That's right. You don't um, have to use every every second of your time if you, if you uh, don't choose to. All right, Mr. Griffiths, you, your response, sir. Well, I, I do believe that people did get sick. I mean, I got I got COVID as well, and uh, for people that did get sick, I am sorry. Uh, but uh, I do think I, the proper role of government is maintained in the Constitution, and what it is is it's to protect people's rights. Um, it's to make sure, that's why the Bill of Rights is there, so that the government does not, um, does not overreach or overstep its bounds. Um, and so the proper role of government, even in the county level or the city level, is that they need to maintain and make sure that their rights are, are taken care of. Even in a crisis situation, we've got to be very careful and, and not um, look into locking people down. We've got to be on the, on the other side and, and be, give the benefit of the doubt to make sure freedom is and liberty is, is and the Bill of Rights is protected. Okay. This question is from Mr. Griffiths. Uh, one of your main issues of your platform is infrastructure. What do you think Iron County should be doing that has not been addressed by the current commission? Well, I think that uh, being on Enix City Council, one thing that uh, we did have is a master plan. And so master plans were, um, uh, because it was part-time, I wasn't able to always stay up to, up to par on that. We, we continued to uh, be involved and, and the city uh, manager would bring that to uh, the table and say, hey, this is some of the things that we need to work on. And so um, that is something that is, it's an evolving situation. So the infrastructure, I know that they're working on water, they're working on, um, you know, flooding, uh, they're working on roads. And so um, it's kind of like riding a, a used car. Um, I'm, you know, once you're able to get into it, you realize that what you have to fix or what needs to continue to happen. So I think that the master plan is probably being followed. Um, and so I, I just, you know, and, and not only that, when you get with other groups or other people, the commissioners, or when you have uh, people that kind of know, uh, have been working in that, um, they will be able to kind of tell us what they think. And, and, and I, we had one gentleman in Enoch that uh, I'd always go to because, he, you know, he was really knowledgeable. He's been with the city for a long time. And so I'd always pick his brain and ask him what he thought. And there was times that he actually was against some of the things that um, we were proposing. And so I felt like that he had the experience. And so sometimes um, listening to other people uh, was very critical um, so as far as Cedar, Cedar City or the county, I think that uh, I need to jump into it, but I, but because I've got the experience, uh, it'll be a quick, um, you know, quick recap what of what's going on, and so I can catch up and uh, be able to uh, be involved. All right, good deal. All right, Mr. Blake. Uh, we have a... We have an active master plan, uh, and it's a fluid plan. It's well, there's there's very few uh, discussions. Uh, a lot of times in our commission meetings, we are updating that in the zoning and the codes and the ordinances. That's it's very fluid. Um, I'm also really proud of our infrastructure. Uh, we have a, a a fantastic road department who has a calendar yearly uh, for road improvements, things like that uh, that they stick to. Uh, we have specifically, we're working with economic development now to target some of the industrial areas, some of the proposed uh, projects to make sure that the sewer infrastructure, the water infrastructure, the road infrastructure is, is uh, suitable for their needs. Uh, something that 
all of us in the commission have been extremely active in with our individual departments. Fantastic. All right, Mr. Blake, this is for you. We've seen unprecedented growth in Iron County, and this has led to a taxing of our current infrastructure and resources. How will you approach the issue of growth in Iron County if you were reelected to the county commission? So, man, growth in Iron County. The tough thing about growth, and I've been asked this a lot, is how are you going to manage growth? What are you going to do? Can't we shut it off? Can we shut our borders? Uh, you've got to, so when it comes to growth, you've got to remember uh, that we're a system that relies on capitalism. Uh, I'm not the one developing all the property. There are a lot of people uh, who have private property rights who are, are, are doing that, and that's absolutely their right to do so. Um, what we need to do is work very closely uh, with our uh, zoning and our planning, the master plan, to make sure that the infrastructure that is uh, required for that growth is suitable. Um, we have a lot of subdivisions in Iron County that came in back in the 70s and 80s, and for one reason or another, they came in, were developed, but they're not anywhere near county standards. Uh, they have water drainage issues. They have road issues. Um, there's all sorts of things, and we ha so we, we're constantly trying to address those issues in those communities. If they would have uh, been planned accordingly, uh, especially with uh, water management, both you know, both having enough water, uh, but specifically for drainage and things like that, uh, we wouldn't be in some of the mess that we are today with some of these things. Uh, roads are extremely important. When a, when a new subdivision is proposed, the contractor, the developer, has to bring those roads up to county standards before we're able to take those over. Um, and, and so I, I really think we're on the right track. Uh, we've got some zoning, uh, we've changed some zoning and written some new ordinances that try and address uh, affordable housing issues. Uh, it's just something that we've got to stay on top of, but we're really in good shape and our staff is awesome. All right. Mr. Griffiths, one minute, sir. Well, I, I, everybody gets asked this question, and, and it, when you have private property uh, rights, um, you cannot take those rights away. So w managing somebody else is very, uh, it's a very scary topic or a very scary thought if, if I'm going to ma manage somebody else, manage their property. Um, I think, you know, again, um, the infrastructure, I, I, you can see that uh, supply and demand uh, will, will uh, continue on. I think that you see that a housing market right now, it's, you know, from the national news, starting to talk about that it, it's, it's on the, it's possibly popping. So that's a, so it, I think that supply and demand is going to actually maybe curve the, uh, the growth. Uh, it's just natural consequences. Um, but we are, uh, that's how a lot of the industry does manage itself and employees make money. Okay. Uh, Mr. Griffiths, this question is for you. Iron County is in the process of choosing a location to begin construction of a new jail. What is your position on the new jail and the proposed locations? Well, again, uh, just uh, when I was called a couple of weeks ago on it um, and questioned on it, I, I thought that it was pretty much a done deal. Um, and then it started to be opened back up. Uh, I've had the opportunity, uh, I've been invited to come and speak to or talk to uh, some uh, group uh, up in Fiddler's area and, and they, they continue to tell me their concerns. Um, uh, for me, um, jumping into the, something like this is, is uh, I, I'm going to have to uh, kind of go back and investigate it myself and uh, look at all of the uh, the situation and the, the issues that uh, were already talked about, but I'm going to have to uh, get caught up and uh, up to speed. As far as uh, the location, um, you know, other than uh, fiddlers, uh, you know, having an issue there, uh, I think that we continuing, uh, I continue to hear over and over again that they're continuing to shop around and look at the best places, um, and that hasn't been uh, resolved. And so, uh, definitely, once I get involved, uh, get 
you know, elected, what will end up happening is I'll be able to uh, jump into the fray and make a decision and determine. But I'm not going to just um, uh, rubber stamp something and put my name on something until I, I do my due diligence and look into it and research it and make sure that, uh, that it's a... Um, that it's a viable option for all of those that are involved in the community. But it sounds like that some good investigation has been taken place, and I appreciate the due diligence already. It's just that, um, you know, I feel like that I can't rubber stamp anything at this point. Okay. Blake. So, super, super uh, controversial issue. Uh, but it's a but it's a great issue. Um, it's a it's a we've had some great examples of uh, community involvement. It's hard to say in a minute. Um, what we're doing. If it helps at all, the next question <laughs> is also on this subject. Oh, good. Um, yeah, it, it, I am just going to say uh, again, we've got a great team that have looked at every aspect. Uh, it's funny because this has been an issue that's been ongoing since I got into the commission for six years. And it seems like every time we have found a spot and thought, this is great, this pencils out, we, there's more information that comes, and then other options open after that. Uh, that's kind of where we are now, and I will explain more in a second. Perfect. Yeah, you're going to get another two minutes on this one. <laughs> Mr. Blake, you've been responsible for selecting the new jail site. There has been criticism that the public has not been involved in discussions about the jail until the very last stages of the process. Do you feel that the public should have been better notified about this process? Uh, yes and no. Um, interestingly enough, uh, every time that we've looked at a proposed site, we've, we've had four different public hearings and public meetings. Uh, and it's interesting when the jail is, say, site, you know, proposed A, and we have them all listed. They're all public information. Site A, uh, a lot of people from that, that area come and, and pro and con. It hasn't, I mean, there's been positives and negatives. Uh, you know, we ruled out site A and say we go to site C. All of a sudden, that area comes, and, and, and some of the things that they've said are like, well, we thought it was going to be over here, so we didn't pay any attention to it. Now, with that being said, um, this is hard. No, nobody wants a jail in their backyard. Um, it, it's a controversial issue, but I'll tell you the good things that have come, that have come from it is working through the process, uh, both with our staff, um, I've been extremely impressed. You know, let me talk about the current proposed uh, the pr the current proposed location. It's in the Fiddler's Canyon area. Um, I've had an opportunity to build a relationship with those folks, both for and against it in that area. Even today, uh, coming here. Uh, I've been texting back and forth with some of those people on some ideas for proposed locations. Uh, they're very much involved in that. And, and we said, okay, if you don't want it here, if you uh, these are your concerns, then please help us. Don't be that group. And, and this is, I mean, this goes for city council. This goes for planning commission. You know, it, you, you can tell us no and throw a fit and shut us down. That's fine, but it would be way better if you would help us move forward. And that's what's happening. Um, we've been able to build some awesome relationships with those folks up in that area, uh, and I'm getting really helpful information to help us move forward if there's a better location. Good deal. Mr. Griffiths. Well, as a uh, full-time commissioner, I feel like that town hall meetings uh, are very critical, and, and sometimes by having those town hall meetings, it would already circumvent that. But one thing that I will say that uh, I, I am really happy to see on this is how the people are actually getting involved. Um, if we could do that, if the people could get involved on, the, uh, on this level, on every issue, I understand it uh, is very taxing and stressful for elected officials, but I'm really pleased to see people um, out and about and being involved in contacting candidates um, and and elected officials on this um, I, you know I've heard that, that the elected officials aren't listening and and that's a tough one too but I am thankful to see uh, uh, the um, empowerment that the people feel on this one so good job okay 
Uh, this, this question is for both of you, so you will each have two minutes to answer the question. Um, since Mr. Griffith started off, I'm going to let uh, Mr. Blake go first on this one. Both of you are law enforcement officers, which provides a different perspective. What do you see as the greatest challenge for Iron County regarding public safety, and how will you address this concern if you are elected to the, elected to the county commission? Man, this is a $64 question nationwide. Uh, so my, uh, my involvement in law enforcement, it's like I said, I, I've, I've been in the law enforcement field for 26 years. Um, I've seen the pendulum swing from the left to the right and the right to the left. Uh, we're in the most difficult, uh, difficult position that we've ever been in in general as law enforcement as far as support from the community, as far as retention, uh, but I'm going to say here in Iron County, we are extremely lucky. We're, we're quite insulated from some of the national issues. We've got great support from our, from our communities. Uh, law enforcement here in Iron County is still a great career and a great place to be. Now, that being said, uh, we've got some challenges, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk specifically about the Iron County Sheriff's Office because that's our realm. Um, we were able, well, about a year ago, little, yeah, about a year ago, uh, we could see we, we were having problems. Uh, we came in at mid-year and we gave a 10% kind of emergency raise to try and address some of these issues within law enforcement. Unfortunately, that was quickly gobbled up by inflation and cost of living. Everything hit at about that same time. Um, at the end of in budget season last year, uh, I proposed another increase uh, for law enforcement and for county uh, across the board, uh, and, and that was not approved. Uh, moving forward, uh, we've got to address the pay and we're doing that. In fact, there'll be a proposal on Monday uh, that I think is going to be very helpful. Uh, but just morale in general, just making sure that we treat our people fairly and are, are, are kind to them and so that they understand we're doing the best. Good deal. All right. Mr. Griffiths. Well, I think that uh, the nation is feeling that. Uh, you know, talking to uh, friends that are in law enforcement, um, they see that, uh, and they feel the crunch uh, from, you know, economics uh, to morale. And I think that that's, we, we need to show that, you know, Iron County is, is a great place to live. And the quality of life here is, is awesome. I mean, as a police, when I was a police officer, I was very thankful to be able to serve here. And so sometimes I think we need to also be, have that gratitude of, of being able to be here and being part of this great community because they have always been supportive. Uh, I've really never seen too many issues that's just been kind of isolated issues when, with, with uh, the police departments or the sheriff's department on morale. But another thing we're facing is that inflation is, is coming. And uh, I, I worry, I mean, it's a balancing act because we've got, uh, it's not only police departments that are having these issues, but you've got, uh, um, you've got businesses. I'm talking to business people that they cannot find people to work. Um, and uh, I don't know, we're still trying to figure that out, even where I'm at. Um, we, we've got uh, people that, that uh, we, we've got positions that are not being filled. Um, so, but coming back to the law enforcement issue is we've got to continue to have that talk and that discussion and hopefully, um, you know, we can treat people with respect and, and show that we have a great community and they, they support you and support er, the things that we that they do and that goes a long way uh, i think that that sometimes is forgotten in the in the conversation that we have okay i'm gonna let uh mr griffiths go ahead and make a closing comment and you have two minutes well again i'm i'm thankful to be able to be part of this process it's uh i've i've had a a, a great understanding of what uh, the elected officials go through. It's not easy to put yourself out there and to um, take the, the feedback. But in the same sense, that's what elected officials have to do. We have to be held accountable. And, and that is why I believe that we need to be involved. You need to 
uh, the community needs to, just like with the jail issue, we need to be involved in all issues, whether it's a, a, a jail issue or a tax issue or a regulation issue. Uh, that's one thing that I think that we can do is, is get rid of some regulations. There's a, a regulation out there that I believe that um, uh, that uh, the county employees can, uh, can come in and uh, look into your property um, and that that's concerning as a as a police officer because you know that's a Fourth Amendment issue and so we need to get we need to start looking at regulations. We need to also look at our debt ratios too, um, and with the spending, um, you know, again coming back to that that we're already um, sixty percent um, increase since you know in the last six years. That's a shocking number when I was looking at that. Um, and when you look at all of that, and then you start to see, uh, and then we, and that doesn't even count uh, the gel that we've we've got uh, in the process. So um, if we continue that pace, you know, in in ten years, if that if they continue to double, that that's a big big budget, you know. And and so, like I said, um, I, I I believe that I am the best candidate, and uh, please uh, vote for me on June twenty eighth. Um, also, uh, vote destry.com. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Blake. Well, I appreciate, <clears throat> appreciate the opportunity. The first thing I want to do is thank, uh, the people that support me. Number one, I want to thank my family. Uh, life in the public eye sucks sometimes. And, uh, I, you know, I want to thank my wife, Amy, um, and my kids that are, that are in the trenches with me, uh, and support me to be able to do this job. Uh, I just want to say, you know, this has been such a pleasure to continue public service in this role. Uh, I am really proud of the things that I've accomplished, uh, and there are projects in, in every single uh, corner of our county. Uh, Brian Head, Canaraville, uh, Burl, Newcastle, Cedar City, Peril and Paraguna, uh, we've been able to make some really good strides as far as upgrading our public safety, making sure that our fire departments are well equipped and, and well trained. Uh, we've been able to make some some great strides uh, as far as pay increases, not only for uh, the sheriff's department, but to take care of all of our all of our employees within Iron County. Uh, without our employees. Uh, Iron County is not successful and the reason that this is such a great place to live is because each and every one of those folks that comes to work every day whether it's in the roads or the jail um, I'm really thankful uh, just for the freedoms that we have here I'm thankful for our prosperity and you know it's it's been our number one uh, really a conservative budget making sure that our that our money is spent wisely, we budget down to the penny, uh, and it's and we've been super successful. Uh, we don't have any debt in Iron County general obligation debt. Uh, it's a wonderful place to work, and I'm just really thankful for the opportunity. Okay, gentlemen, I am thankful for you both coming in here, putting yourself into the hot seat. It is zero fun to do. I know I've done this for a long time, and, and I've been in your position for a long time, and I, I get it. And I appreciate you coming in and taking the tough uh, questions. And a lot of these questions came from members of the community who uh, I reached out to and asked to send questions in. So we're appreciative of all you out there who have participated. Um, one thing that uh, I went and, and listened to Sheriff Carpenter last night, uh, he was giving a speech at the high school and, and always loved to, to hear Ken, and, and uh, he got my dander up just a little bit telling me about 22 deputies uh, we've lost since January. The turnover is out of control. Um, so while we're sitting there, I reached out to my CPA via phone, and she's actually in the process of creating a 501c3 organization. Uh, we've got Ruthie Warman, who's going to be part of that, and, and uh, Pandora Saunders, and myself are going to start a 501c3 called the Friends of the Iron County Sheriff. We're going to be uh, passing the hat at the uh, intersections and collecting money and trying to offset some of the training and equipment costs so that that 
money can be shifted into the pockets of our deputies. That is a great thing about uh, Iron County is I love seeing uh, the cookies and, and uh, the heart attacks and, and the donuts and the meals and, and all the things that uh, people in this community do for our, our law enforcement. And, and we really do. You know, I've lived all over this country. I've lived in Georgia, Washington, D.C., Michigan, California, New York. Um, and I when I first moved here, people were like, oh, yeah, the cops, you know, the same normal stuff that you always hear from usually people who have been in trouble with the police. Um, the cops suck. Blah, blah, blah. But I can tell you I've been training police officers for nearly 30 years, and we have some of the best trained. We have some of the most uh, just the right mindset. Uh, from our law enforcement in this community. So in, in that regard, we are very blessed. Uh, we have excellent, dedicated, I mean, I love seeing the picture the other day of one of the officers mowing someone's lawn. <laughs> right. Um, you know, and it's it just that, that is the epitome of, of community policing right there. Mm -hmm. And and I think it is fantastic that we are so blessed. So we'll be reaching out to folks once that 501c3 paperwork is completed we're going to be asking you for money. Um, we're going to be passing hats at the intersection and filling buckets of money and, uh, and finding out from the sheriff uh, what, uh, have him identify what needs he needs met so that he can shift uh, those funds that he's using now for equipment and training awesome. uh, and hopefully put some of that into the pockets of our, our great deputies because I know they're stretched thin right now. They are filling in all those hours for all of the holes that are, are there, and so God bless them. Do something nice for them. Keep doing the nice things for them. Um, you know, if I happen to be in a restaurant and, and I see folks in there in uh, in uniform, they don't ever pay for their food, I'll tell you that. Um, and so just uh, if you have an opportunity, or just stop and thank them because they really are keeping us safe and, uh, and, and serving this community in a great way. So, gentlemen, I thank you both for both serving as police officers because I have a thank soft you. spot. You see my my bracelet i've worn that every day for for i don't know probably 20 years um and i appreciate all you do for the community and i appreciate you coming in here and getting into the hot spot and uh, god bless everybody listening share this with your friends and have a great day Thank you for listening to What's Really Happening in Southern Utah, the podcast. We hope that you found this content to be worthwhile. We want to hear from you. So if you have any upcoming event that you'd like to share with our listeners, or if you represent a local group, we'd love to have you come into the studio. Just email us at contact at what's really happening su.com. We're also working on streaming this podcast live and have the ability for folks to call in and ask questions or share items of interest to residents of Southern Utah. Be sure to share this podcast with your friends. And again, thanks for listening.